You got a 200 square monstrosity and it's got 400 damaged shingles on it and the engineer is telling you that it's serviceable and pliable and a spot replacement can be done to industry standards? <laughs> That's bull! This is gross, don't watch this. Uh, Why is it that forensic engineers always say that everything is repairable? Technically, they're not wrong. Everything is repairable. You may end up having to replace every component of it, but everything is repairable, right? The roof itself is repairable, but you just have to replace every shingle that gets damaged along the way. And then you're repairing the roof. Still a repair. When we're talking about doing an attempted repair, goal being that we can prove to the insurance carrier that the roof isn't repairable in some way, one thing that we can do instead of installing a new shingle is taking a shingle out that's damaged and then put that same one right back in. I like to call it a simulated repair. We're simulating all the motions that you would normally take when doing a regular repair, except we're putting the old shingle back in. There's a benefit to this, especially for discontinued materials, because you don't have to try to find something that matches. And that might be an issue when you know that there isn't something that, that will match, especially in dimensions. So doing a simulated repair is a little bit useful. Simulated repairs really want to show that additional damage is caused. Now, whether that damage be from prying the nail up, breaking the seals, or lifting the shingle to drive another nail, it doesn't matter is if additional damage is being caused in some manner or some form, some fashion, then the shingle is not considered repairable. So what do we do when we do a simulator repair? Well, we have to take a flat bar and break the seals. That's right, a flat bar. Not a spatula, not a scraper. The instructions that a few of the shingle manufacturers actually publish specify flat bar, flat bar. So you use a flat bar and you break the seals. What if I tear a shingle? Evidence of non-repairability. Okay, so you break all the seals, right? All the seals are broken. And everything comes out fine. What do we do now? Now we take that same flat bar and we go under the shingle and put the teeth around the nail. So you have teeth around the nail and the shingle's still on top of it and the nail head's up here. And you have to work the nail out using the shingle in between the flat bar and the nail. This is a big aspect of repairability. If I can't remove that nail without ripping the shingle up off of it, then it's not repairable. So what happens? Either the nail gets stuck, maybe it's a ring shank nail, maybe it's just really strong in the decking, maybe it's brand new. If it gets stuck and the shingle rips up off the nail, not repairable. If the nail is really weak and the head just goes and allows the teeth of the pry bar to come up off of it because the head just kind of, if the nails can't come out without damaging the shingles, then it's not repairable. It's not repairable. What else is there to do? Well, now that we've got all that out, we've removed the shingle, we're gonna put the same one right back in so we don't have to worry about size issues. Now we've got the pliability concern. Can I lift the shingle above high enough to be able to drive a nail with a hammer the correct distance? Are you supposed to use the same nail hole? I don't know. Let's say that you don't. So you're gonna leave a nail hole behind. For the sake of argument, let's just do that. We're gonna leave a nail hole behind, we're gonna go just beside it, we're gonna drive a nail. It has to be the correct length. If you were able to do that, but you couldn't pry the shingles apart without causing matting transfer and you couldn't pull the nails out without ripping the shingle up off of it, it doesn't matter if the shingle is pliable at that point, you've still caused damage to the surrounding materials. And any damage that you cause to the surrounding materials has to be replaced. It's all part of the same repair. They have to get you back to a pre-damage condition. Pre-damage, not other damage is acceptable as long as this one that is damaged by the storm goes and is replaced. 
Uh, I mean, engineers have this mentality that you can take a Ford Bronco, remove the engine, and stick it inside a Prius. It can be done. It doesn't mean it should be done. And it doesn't mean that there's going to be a warranty when it's over with. Any damage that is caused as a result of that repair is still part of the same direct physical loss. They owe for that. They owe for proper repairs. Every time. Every time. Now, one thing that nobody ever talks about is where is the damaged shingle on the roof? Is it in the middle of the field? That's what everybody is assuming when we're talking about repairability. If the shingle is in the field, then the simulator repair that we've been describing is what you go with. But if it's near a valley and you have to remove the shingles going up to that valley, now you have nail holes in the flashing. If there's valley metal, if there's valley metal there and there's nail holes in it, guess what you have to do? You have to replace the entire valley. And now you're into the other side, the other course. So you got to think about where these things are. Is that shingle near a hip? It might be. Now you have to take the hip off. Is that going to damage the felt or the other courses? I don't know. It might. It might not. But now you have to worry about how to remove the hip shingles, how to remove the ridge cap without causing damage. Can you do that? There's a lot more that goes into whether or not a repair can be made to a handful of shingles or not. And the next time an engineer goes out there and starts talking to you about this is a pliable shingle, ask them if they can break the seals cleanly, ask them if they can remove the nails easily, and then also ask them where the damaged shingles are in relation to the valley metal or flashings. And that's all I've got to say about that.